guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Devisa, and today I have another video for you guys about cruising and tips and tricks. So, last week we talked about dining packages, and the week before we talked about beverage packages. This week I'm going to be talking to you guys about shore excursions. What they are, do I recommend them, do you think they're important, you know, things like that. Should you purchase them, do you have to purchase them, you know, those commonly asked questions that we get from people all the time. So, if you guys are interested in learning more about what shore excursions are, as well as the types of shore excursions that are offered by Royal Caribbean, definitely watch this video. If you are interested in more cruise tips and tricks, definitely subscribe to my channel and enjoy! So like I mentioned in my previous video, in order to look at the types of shore excursions that are offered by Royal Caribbean, you first have to sign into your cruise planner on the Royal Caribbean website. So after I sign into my cruise planner, I can pretty much see all of the shore excursions that are available for me to purchase. Um, shore excursions get added onto the website every couple of weeks. The website's always getting updated. When you first book your cruise, if you book months in advance, maybe even a year out, all of the excursions may not be available for purchase yet. So, you know, definitely check back with the cruise planner to see if more gets added. So first I just want to talk about like what is a shore excursion. So a shore excursion is an activity that you can purchase outside of the cruise. So basically when you're on a cruise, you're on a ship you know, for X amount of days. So we're going on a seven day cruise. We went on a seven day cruise this past July on Allure of the Seas, and my family and I are going on another seven day cruise um, on Oasis of the Seas. So basically your cruise is just on the ship, you're, you know, you have unlimited food, unlimited drinks, you know, whatever is complimentary for the cruise. Once you, based on your itinerary, you're supposed to go to certain islands, you know, it's not guaranteed, you know, if there's like a hurricane or anything going on, the cruise does reserve the right to cancel st that stopping at that destination. But, you know, say for example, we live in a perfect world and you're able to stop at all your destinations. You know, whether you're doing like a Western Caribbean cruise, an Eastern Caribbean cruise, a Mediterranean cruise, whatever type of cruise. We're actually going on a cruise to the Bahamas, which is super exciting. So we're going to be stopping at their Coco Cay. Um, and we're also going to be stopping in Orlando as well as Nassau, Bahamas. So based on your itinerary, you know, you can go on the website, sign into your cruise planner, click which destination you want to look at the shore excursions for and then go from there. So based on my cruise planner, when I click shore excursions, it tells me to choose like which shore excursions I want to look at. Do I want to look at the ones in Orlando? Do I want to look at the ones in um, Coco Cay or Nassau, Bahamas? So like I'll just show you guys like what mine looks like. So say I click Orlando. Um, you know, they offer like the Kennedy Space Center. Um, shuttle they offer or sorry they offer <laughs> um, like transportation to Disney World transportation to Sea World um, Universal Studios those types of things so they offer like a good amount of stuff of things to do in Orlando right now my family and I are still trying to decide whether or not it's worth going to Disney World or not just because I've been to Disney World and honestly when we were at Disney World we were there for like 10 hours last summer for like one day and like we did not see the entire park. We saw maybe a third of the park and we were there for 10 hours. So because the lines are so long and like, you know, it's just, it's an hour away from the cruise ship. We're kind of like, I don't know if it's worth, you know, doing Disney World for like six hours and like risk missing the cruise. So I don't know. We're still trying to figure out what to do in Orlando. If we don't do Disney World, we might just like hang out. Um, so yeah. Then, you know, I click through and I look at Coco Cay. Coco Cay is um, another stop that we'll be making on our cruise. So for Coco Cay, they have the Thrill Water um, Day Pass, which is like the water park, uh, where you can do like the slides and all that good stuff. There's the Beach Pass, there's Cabanas, you know, there's different options for those types of excursions. Um, and yeah, they have like the Hot Air Helium Balloon, they have jet skiing, um, those types of things. So that looks like fun. 
And then for Nassau Bahamas, um, I know one thing I'm definitely interested in doing is the dolphin excursion. A lot of different um, cruise itineraries offer dolphin excursions, which people are really excited about. They can be kind of pricey, kind of expensive, but definitely a nice experience to have with like children if you have any. So there's like the dolphin one, the Blue Lagoon, um, they have Atlantis. Um, what else do they have? They have the seahorse sailing, they have snorkeling. So yeah, they have like sea lions, you know, it's and like lots of different options. When I went on my cruise this past summer, some of the excursions that we did that I really loved was jet skiing. That was definitely my fiance Emmanuel's favorite excursion. He loved the jet skiing. I was terrified. I can't swim. So the entire time I was like panicking. I was like holding on to him so tight. I was like, oh my God, if I fall in this water, I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was our first time jet skiing. It was his first time and my first time. We were both kind of like, ah, he was fine. He was like, okay. I was like, ah. So, you know, it was definitely an experience. It was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> we are doing it again next summer unfortunately he loves it but so I'm gonna I'm gonna support him and I'm gonna go with him and do it but I'm definitely you know on the fence about it because I can't swim but if you're a good swimmer and you love jet skiing it's definitely something to look into you know to me personally I view cruising as like first of all I usually cruise when I'm celebrating something second of all if you're gonna cruise and you have access to these excursions that you normally wouldn't do at home do it so I know that back home I would not jet ski so when I go on a cruise if I see a good price for jet skiing I'm gonna do it you know what I mean same thing we also did horseback riding I have never been horseback riding my fiance had never been horseback riding we're from New York City the most the closest thing you'll get to horseback riding is in Central Park if you get in like one of those like carriages where they like drive you around that's the closest thing you're gonna get to horseback riding in New York City so you know, going horseback riding in Jamaica was like a lot of fun. Again, I was scared. I'm always scared of everything. I was scared I would fall off and like break my neck, of course. But <laughs> that didn't happen and it turned out to be a really great experience. We went horseback riding in the ocean. It was a lot of fun. Really, really exciting. Again, I feel like if you're going on a cruise and you have the money to afford these excursions, you should definitely do excursions that you know you wouldn't be able to do at home. This is your opportunity to travel and to try new things and to have these experiences and these memories with your loved ones. So that's my opinion on shore excursions. Do you need them? No. Do you have to buy them? No. If you can afford them and you're looking to gain experiences and to try new things, you should definitely do it. I feel like you people should definitely be open to trying shore excursions, you know, if there's like really cool ones available. You know, things like dolphins, sea lions, you know, snorkeling. I feel like you can do snorkeling for free in like some places, but like if not, I think those are good things, you know, to try to get to do if you're out on like a Caribbean island. You know what I mean? Like those beaches are beautiful. You will be able to see so much when you go snorkeling, you know, in those islands. So you know, I definitely think shore excursions are a great way to just, you know, expand your horizon, try new things, get new experiences, those types of things. Um, so yeah, those are some of the shore excursions. These are just extra activities. These are not included in the price of the cruise. These are extra add-ons that you do at your destinations. These are not things, activities that you do on the ship at all. On the ship, you're just on the ship. Once you stop at those destinations, like say you're stopping in... Jamaica or Haiti or Mexico, St. Martin, St. Lucia, you know, those types. If you're stopping in one of those countries, these are activities that you do on the island um, and they're they're hosted, they're, they're um, run by people who work for Royal Caribbean. Okay, so there are excursions, there are third party excursions that you can book outside the cruise line. I've done that once when we went to Cozumel, Mexico. I booked an excursion um, at Mr. Sancho's, um, which was like a third party. And like I found that out through the Facebook group for the cruise that I was on. Um, in terms of recommending third party excursions, honestly, it's really risky. Like, because the thing is, is that when you book excursions through Royal Caribbean, they will wait for you if your excursion runs late. Say, for example, you get stuck in traffic and you're, and you're having a hard time getting back to the cruise ship. If the excursion was booked through Royal Caribbean, they will wait for you um, until you get back on the ship. If you book it through a third party, Royal Caribbean has no idea where you are and they will not wait for you and they will leave you and you'll be stuck on that island and you will need to find a way to take a flight um, to the next destination to meet the cruise ship. So 
Um, it is risky booking third-party excursions. The, the reason why a lot of people do it is because it's very, ch it's much cheaper. You save a lot of money. Um, I've even looked into it. When I was on my last cruise, there were horseback riding excursions for like 30 bucks. You know, that's a really good price as opposed to the 80 bucks that I paid through Royal Caribbean. But I mean, you know, it's, it's about safety. It's about making sure you don't miss your cruise because that's another thing too. You don't know these companies. You don't know these countries. So you just have to be safe and it's, it's just better if you book it through Royal Caribbean. I know it's more expensive, but at least you're guaranteed um, back onto the ship and you won't be left on an island. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not required. These are again upgrades and add-ons, but but like they're they're really great experiences. So if you can afford to do them, I would highly recommend it. If you're on a tight budget or you're going with like a large group of people and you just can't afford to take everyone, then that's fine. There are definitely free activities and things that you can do on islands. Um, in terms of pros and cons, my last cruise, my fiance and I, we went on the Western Caribbean cruise and we stopped at haiti jamaica and mexico and i already posted videos of our experiences on those islands as well as the shore excursions that we've done there and to be honest with you again like i said jet skiing was amazing horseback riding was amazing mrs andros was okay um I mean, there's pros and cons to booking these excursions. You know, when we were in Labadee, Haiti, we had back-to-back -back excursions that took up our entire experience on the island that we didn't really get to explore on our own. I would say that that's the downside. Like, when we were in Labadee, Haiti, as soon as we got off the ship, we went straight to jet skiing. Right after jet skiing, we had parasailing. Then right after parasailing, we had a, a island tour and then right after that, we went on the the dragon zip line thing. So like, our, and then by the time we were done with that, it was time to get back on the ship. So we didn't really get to check out the beach. We didn't get. To, we missed lunch. It was such a busy day. We like missed lunch when we were parasailing. Um, so we didn't even get to try the food on the island that was like complimentary because Labadee's owned by Royal Caribbean. So we didn't even get to try the food on the island. Um, but yeah, so like I felt like in Labadee we signed up for too many excursions. Um, so if you were to book excursions, I would say maybe do one or two. Um, this with this upcoming cruise, <laughs> I'm definitely running into that issue with Coco K because there was a lot, a lot of ton of things that I wanted to do. Like there's like the helium balloon, there's jet skiing, there's like the water park, you know. And I was like, wait, like we still have to check out the Oasis Lagoon and like the pools and stuff like that. Like so, you really want to make sure you don't book too many excursions to the point where you don't get to explore on your own because. Honestly, that's also really cool when you get to just walk around the island yourself and find things on your own. That's also another great experience. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to like do a video on shore excursions and let you guys know what's available, the types of things, you know, whether or not I think it's worth it. I definitely do if you can afford it. Um, just don't do too many because you want to enjoy your time at that island. You're only there for like six to eight hours if you're there for that long. So you really want to like really get the most out of that island before getting back on the ship. Alrighty, if you guys have any other questions, definitely post them in the comment box. You know, let me know. We can have a discussion about whether or not you guys think shore excursions are worth it. What were some of your favorite shore excursions? Um, things like that. Thanks for watching.